So we just sang the priestly blessing because, as you'll see in a minute or a couple of moments, we're going to be talking about the priestly blessing, which appears in tomorrow morning's Torah reading. But before we talk about the priestly blessing, we got to talk about Coco. Love that word, Coco. Coco. It's a funny word, Coco. In fact, it's the repetition of two letters that seemingly have no meaning in and of themselves. And you put them together and you have Coco or Coco Nut or Co. Co. Doesn't seem like a good place to begin a sermon or a, a wisdom teaching. It's talking about the two letters, C O, that are Co. Co. But something significant in Co, not only in English, but also in the priestly blessing, as you'll see in a moment. But so many Co's. Let's think of some Co's together. Co pilot, collaboration, Co operative, Co. Co-teaching, co-exist, co-operate, co-ed. Keep them combing. Come here, here, here. Keep some more co. Co. Go, co. Collusion. Yeah, nice, nice. Collusion. Co. Co. There's one co that, that, although it sounds like a positive, actually, in the 80s and then still to this day, to some degree, it gets a bad rap, and it's codependency. Codependency was all the rage in all the literature in the 80s as the world of psychobabble began, you know, to become normative and central. Codependency, which at first glance would sound like a really wonderful thing. We are codependent. We are dependent on one another. Co. We cooperate and we codepend. That sounds lovely. But of course, for those of you who are following this and who know what codependency came to mean, codependency was to some degree labeled as almost a pathology. To be codependent in the literature of the 12 step program and other programs was to have blurred the boundaries between the self and the other. We are not standing on our own. We are codependent. We have an unhealthy relationship between our own agency and the agency of the other. To be codependent is to confuse the I and the we. It is in some way synonymous with a kind of enabling, a kind of learned helplessness or shared non-agentic relating. I will pull back from who I am so that you will pull back from who you are so that we will meet in our collective pulled back place in the middle. Codependent on one another for ways and in ways, for things and for ways that we really have confused. Codependency and leaving codependency maturing beyond codependency, having a relationship that was not codependent. That was like, that was it. I don't want to be in a codependent relationship. No way. I want to be in an interdependent relationship. I want to be in a independent but dependent relationship. But no, not me. Codependent no more, as Melody Beattie told us. Codependent no more. And so this letter which would seem to involve two, which would seem to invite relationship and shared holding, shared something. I want to redeem codependency tonight. I want to lift it out of the waste bucket of poorly named and framed psychological phenomena. And I want to do it with maybe the oldest prayer and oldest set of verses in all of the Western canon. We have in tomorrow morning's Torah reading the words that we just chanted, the priestly blessing. Chapter 6 of the book of Numbers, 622. 
And God spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and Aaron's children saying, Thus, Ko, exactly like this, shall you bless the children of Israel and say to them, and then the iconic three verses, each building in intensity, beautifully crescendoing three words that lead to five words that lead to seven words. The musicality, building, the prophetic incantational quality of those words seeming to invoke a magical formula. Ko Tivarchu is not sort of bless them, but Bless them exactly like this, with these three words followed by five, followed by seven. Magic. And then the capping verse of the entire piece. Verse 27 after, right, V'yasim l'cha shalom. Pause. V'samu et shmi al b'nei Yisrael v'ani avarachem. God says to Moses, after you've told the Aaron clan, your brother and his children, this is the way I want you to bless the children of Israel. Then God says to finish and you shall place my name on the children of Israel. Feels like God is still speaking to Aaron here. Vani and I will bless them. Now I'm sure even without having read all the commentaries that have been written for the past two millennia, if you're just tracking with me at this moment, you might be asking a question that was asked about a thousand years ago or even two thousand years ago wait a second who's blessing who? who is blessing whom? in the beginning go speak to Aaron and tell him that you Aaron and your children are to bless the children of Israel ko ko tivarchu thus shall you bless that's you Aaron priests ko hanim ko hanim And then the end of the priestly blessing is, and you shall place the name, my name on them, and God says, in God's first person says, and then I will bless them. Who's blessing the children of Israel? Is it the priests? Or is it God? And what's it that and, and why does that matter? What's at stake? I remember a dear colleague of mine, one of, I think one of the most magnificent and amazing spiritual leaders in the Jewish world, a remarkable rabbi, cantor, speaker, leader, Rabbi Angela Buchdahl once came to Romamu um, on the holidays and saw what is known in Yiddish as Duchenin. Duchenin is the priestly blessing. And there in the front of the room were the Kohanim, of our community, the priests of our community, with their Spock-like hands extended. And she, having grown up in the Reform world, and her daughter, her young daughter, who has also only been in Reform temples her whole life, her daughter turned to her and said to her, Mom, what the mm is happening here? And Angela wrote to me and said that she spoke about it at her temple at Central Synagogue the next week and said to them, you know, I was sitting with my daughter and all of a sudden a group of priests got up and they did the whole Spock thing and they blessed them with the 357. And it begged the question, do we believe that priests are the medium through which the blessing of God, as you understand God, must be mediated for us to receive that blessing? And the ambiguity of who is blessing begs that conversation. Is it the priests who are blessing as they stand here conduiting and transmitting? Or is it the divine, unmediated, pure? No need for a veil. And one of the answers that is given that I love, one of the answers that tries to make it all work out, to try to, to streamline what these verses are saying, who is the blesser, why does it change from God saying, you will be the blessers, and then God saying, no, I will be the blessers. Here is the Sifri. Here is an early Midrash on what is happening. It says, I'm sorry, this is not the Sifri, this is from the Al-Shikh. 
much later on, but he's quoting an earlier Midrash. He says, Ko tivarchu. When God says to Aaron, I'm sorry, to Moses to tell Aaron, Ko, this is the way to bless them. He's saying to them, you are to prepare the Israelites through this blessing that they might be ready to receive my blessing. You are to prepare the Israelites to receive blessing that they might be ready to receive my blessing. And in seeking to understand this, Nechama Leibowitz, in her commentary, a great commentator on Torah, says, if you are someone who says, wait, I don't feel like I need preparation, I don't want the priests up there doing the Spock thing, I just want a direct channel, here's the Gemara, the Talmud in Masechet Shabbat. Listen to this, and then we're going to bring it all together. B'Shash, Allah Moshe Lamarom, Mitzao la Kodesh Baruch Hu, Shaya Kosher Ketarim Laotiyot. At the hour that Moses ascended on Mount Sinai, he found the Holy One of Blessing God sitting and tying little crowns and beautiful things on the top of the letters. Amar Lord Kodesh Baruch Hu, this story, this myth says, God says to Moses, Moshe, Ein Shalom Bi'irecha. Don't you, Moses, feel like it's polite to say hello to me? Don't they... In your, where you're from, where y'all from, in Austin or wherever you're from, Moses, don't you, when you see God, say, Hey, God, shalom. That's what the rabbis imagine God saying to Moses. Like Moses was just sitting there watching God do this artwork, and then God says to Moses, Wait a second, shouldn't you say hello to me? It's not polite. So what is, what is in this imagined dialogue between God and Moses? Moses says to God, Amar lefanav, ribono shalolam, Moses says to God, Master of the world, Klum yesh eved noten shalom de rabo. Moses says, Is there a place in the world where someone with so little power preemptively says hello to the all powerful one? Is there a servant that preemptively says to the king or to the master, Hi? I was just waiting for you. And now listen to what God says as the rabbis imagine God saying this because it brings us insight into codependency that is holy. Amar Lo says God to Moses in the rabbi's imagination, True, Moses, God says, but you should have helped me. Haya lecha leozreini. You're right. I have much more power than you. I'm the blesser. But I need your help for me to be able to bless you. We're in this together. As much as I want to give to you, if you're not ready to receive it, if you are not helping me give you, if you don't realize, if we don't realize that so many of the things that we want in our lives are things that are already here, but because we haven't prepared ourselves to receive them, they sit around, waiting for us. It's as if we say, you know, we go up to heaven, we say, God, can you, can you give me a blessing? God says, I, I already gave it to you, but you, you missed it. I was waiting for you to help me bless you. You remember that gratitude on Wednesday morning? You were so unprepared to see it, it just went... We are co-dependent on the world around us to be able to receive what is given. We are co-dependent. We are co-tivarchu. We are co hain We are beings who require preparation to arrive. We don't have to prove that we deserve blessing, but we have to be ready when it comes our way. We don't have to prove Right, that God is needing a mediator, but we sure could use 
all manner of hayalecha leozreni. It was, I was waiting for you to help me help you. I was waiting for you to help me help you. We pause at this moment as my son and Sinai are, thank you both so much. And you should know that this little, this little Kohen over here, right, his dad's a Kohen, parrot's a Kohen. One day this little guy is going to be giving the old. <laughs> what it means to live in this world is to recognize that we are mutually dependent on one another and that to be codependent is not to live confused by the boundaries but, but submitting that even if there's more power we still need each other that relationships are about sharing the load relationships are I could do it by myself but why would I want to God says I could easily give you all the blessing you want but I'm going to bring the co hain because you're going to co do this with me. You're not only going to receive my blessing, but you're going to be a co-creator, a co-laborator in the blessing that you receive. Ko tivarchu. Bless them with ko. Bless them, bless them with a recognition that it is not asymmetrical. It is not one-dimensional. It is not unidirectional. It is a collaborative effort. And that every blessed moment in our lives had to do with both preparation and stepping in to own our part in the co-dependent, co-operative, co-hain, co-co-co. Of course, you might be wondering at this moment, isn't it Romamu's annual membership drive? And is the rabbi going to connect that to the membership at Romamu? <laughs> well... I'll leave it to you to make those connect connections, but <laughs> it's super clear that the blessing of Romamu in each and every one of your lives, those who came tonight and said they love this temple, and those who come every Friday night and Saturday morning and come high holidays and come to classes with Rabbi Jill Hammer or come to classes with any manner of our amazing staff, teachers, you know that Romamu is blessing you in your lives but ko tivarchu wouldn't it be great if this is your home that you would not wait for us to say hello but that you might step in le'ozreinu to help us lift this together in your homework tonight wherever you go along this weekend I hope that you ask yourselves whether or not you are preparing to receive blessing what you might do to be partnering with how blessing occurs in your life, whatever that might look like, and in what ways you are not partnering, where you are imagining the all-powerful one, whomever that is, will be the one that does it, and you don't have to step in at all. God confuses us tomorrow morning and says, you bless them and bless them to receive blessing, cooperating with the Kohanim, and then God says, I'll do my part. Please rise.